So Lynn has for many years had a product that used what they call isobaric. Yeah. Um, talk to us, what, what, is a, what is an isobaric system? What does it mean? How does it work? Yeah, so you know, this is something you would see pretty commonly in the past. And what isobaric loading is, is where instead of um, a single woofer uh, producing the bass, you actually couple two woofers together through a common chamber. So you could have them face to face was one was one option, and they're wired so that they're they're pushing. So one of them is in opposite polarity, so they're they're pushing together mm -hmm. as if they're one woofer, and this uh, halves the enclosure size requirements. Why? Um, well, because you're it's effectively making a woofer with a different set of parameters, as if you had. Um, double the mass and have the compliance and a different set of parameters by having them operate together as one. And so one's inside the box and one's outside the box? Well, there's multiple ways to do it. They can be coupled through a chamber in the center or they can be sort of directly coupled where only the trapped air between the cones is, um, you know, the, the space between them. And um, sometimes they will be mounted face to face. Sometimes they'll be mounted, you know, um, in the same orientation, and um, the the reason why the face-to-face -face orientation was appealing is that <clears throat> if there is a, uh, a second harmonic distortion when you place them face to face, there's a distortion cancellation effect. So that's why you tend to see them in that orientation the most. And um, well, not to mention you can just half the box size. I mean, that's right. gotta be but you know the negatives are that the system you know is actually less efficient um, and you are paying for two woofers instead of one so if you're a electronics manufacturer like Lynn selling amplifiers that's right. probably okay well you know and part the efficiency of, yeah and and you know there's no free lunch as far as box size efficiency trade off mm -hmm. but Sometimes it was, it was easier back then to get a certain set of woofer parameters by using multiple drivers instead of a single one uh, because magnets weren't as strong necessarily. There are newer grades of magnet material and better understanding of magnetic circuits and things like that. So nowadays, um, so this was pretty common in car audio back in the day because people were... Isobaric? Isobaric was, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that or aperiodic loading um, because they're trying to force woofers into a small box because you don't want to take up too much trunk space sure. at the time. So and then truly small box subwoofers came out um, in the late 80s, early 90s. And, you know, as amplifier power crept up, you know, the, you know, the woofer designs followed. You, you had uh, higher mass moving systems on woofers and stronger magnets and stiffer suspensions being used. And that accomplishes the same thing that the isobiarc loading did, but with the single driver. So actually, Kicker Car Audio came up with a product called the Solo Barrack, which was one woofer, you know, it was a marketing name, but one woofer to try to accomplish the, the small box woofer thing. Uh, and it, it didn't have any special double magnets or anything like that, but you know, was intended to play in a small box. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Very, very cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, as soon as I hear that, I think of butt, the butt kicker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually. Um, you remember that, uh, the, what was that, a vibration oh, sort of thing? Oh, yeah. There, there was a bunch of them. I actually saw the, um, the butt kickers being made at the Eminence factory in Kentucky. About, Eminence, no, that was a driver manufacturer. Yeah, they still are. They yeah. they, they make millions of um, musical instrument and pro audio drivers still yeah. and they're they're in Kentucky and they made they made the butt the, kickers. The butt kicker. There were two women in there winding these uh, coils and doing all of that and uh, it was quite a production. Oh my god. I, I mean this is so unaudiophile, but I I love the idea of the visceral feel like when I'm sitting there if it starts kicking my butt, you know. I mean, I think that would be Yeah, it's, that it's, would be amazing. We so Chris, we got to come up with a, a, a wireless remote control uh, butt kicker. Butt kicker. All yeah. right, there's a product ID in there yeah, somewhere. I know, a high-end, high-end, <laughs> high-end butt kicker. I love it. All right, well, thanks. Thank you.